first of all, all right, one of the big mistakes that I've seen, so we have two functions. And at these two functions, I say find the zeros and determine the multiplicity. First of all, find the zeros is just a way when we're talking about functions to really solve the equation. All right? The zeros are going to be when each one of the solutions to these equations when they set equal to zero. So in algebra 2, you guys factored and you learned how to solve when an equation was set equal to zero. Now we're talking about functions. And just here's a function, so now it's just set up as you know, f of x equals here's your function, your polynomial. And when I say find the zeros, all I'm telling you to do is set it equal to zero. Tell me the solutions that make that equation true. Because the solutions that make that equation true are what we call the zeros. But don't be confused just by the name of zeros. The zeros are where the graph crosses the x-axis, right? Those are your <coughs> x-intercepts or where the graph touches it. Now, how do we determine if it touches it or it crosses it? That's multiplicity. Multiplicity, if you guys remember, tells us does the graph touch at the x-intercept or cross. So to solve an equation like this, you can't subtract the 4 and then divide by 5 because it's a quadratic, so we have to factor. So hopefully you guys can see on this one, this by factoring this, we can set this as x minus 4 times x minus 1, right? Right? Everybody follows me with this factor? So if I take a function, set it equal to 0, I factor. Now I apply the zero product property. x minus 4 equals 0. x minus 1 equals 0. Add the 4 to both sides. Add the 1 to both sides. And therefore, you can see the zeros here are x equals 4 and x equals 1. Right? But now, and these are also the x-intercepts, but now we need to determine what is the multiplicity. So in determining multiplicity, remember guys, we had the form of x minus uh, a raised to the k, where k told you the multiplicity. That was in your notes. So k is your multiplicity. So what we do is we go back and look at our factors. Here is the set of our factors. And you want to make sure that you have the set as your linear factors um, will really help. But you look at this and you say, all right, what are the exponents of each one of my factors? And the exponent of both factors are? Zero. One. Well, I circle them with the zero, but they are going to be one. Right? Sorry, that was probably confusing. But inside each one of those is a one. Right? I just kind of put a circle like where it should be. So therefore, it has a multiplicity of one, which is odd. So yes? But what if it doesn't factor into two perfect squares? Or it doesn't factor like into that? Like this one? It like I'm going to go over that problem. I'll go over that. Don't worry about that. I'll go over that problem. So here, you have this as 1 and 1. So therefore, you have an odd multiplicity, right? So your multiplicity, so you can write, you have an odd multiplicity of 1, right? And so what does that tell you about the graph? At each one of these zeros, or x-intercepts, the graph Crosses. Okay. The graph crosses. How do, you, yes. how do you know whether it crosses or touches? If it has an odd multiplicity, it crosses. If it has an even multiplicity, it touches. So let's go and take a look at what this is. Now, if you guys wanted to look at this graph, we, we know this is a quadratic. We know the end behavior is even and positive. So if I was going to graph this, right, I know it crosses at 1, 2, 3, 4. I know it crosses at 1, and I know the end behavior is going to go up and up. So if I just wanted to kind of sketch this graph, I know it's probably going to look something like that. Right? All right. Now let's go over to this problem. This problem, we have x to the 6 minus 5x to the 4th plus 4x squared. Now if I was going to factor a problem like this, first of all, you always want to see what you can factor out as far as the GCF. And I noticed that they all have an x squared. So let me factor out an x squared. Okay. Now, we need to go ahead and factor this further. So, you might look at this and say, well, how do I factor this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, do you see how this and that are exactly the same? The only difference is instead of using x times x, I have to get to x to the fourth. So, when I factor this, I'm going to use x squared minus 4 times x squared minus 4. Alright, now I can use the zero product. Now I can 
use this yield product property for each one of these and say x squared equals, actually, um, let me write this as a zero real quick. Or as a factor, I'm sorry. All right, do you guys see how I, x squared is the same thing as x minus zero squared? All right, but remember all factors are written in the form of x minus a. So you have to subtract it from your a. In this case, for x squared, it's just a is zero. Okay? So I'm just writing it in factor form. So now I have three factors. Uh, well, well, not yet. I don't have my linear. I can rewrite these as my linear factors. But anyways, I can set these equal to zero. All right. Then I just solve for each one. Right. So in this case, I have x equals zero. Here, I have x equals plus or minus 2. Here, I have x equals plus or minus 1. Okay? I can't tell you how many students took the square root on their, on their homework and forgot to include the plus or minus. So now, I have x squared equals plus or minus 2, x squared equals plus or minus 1, and x squared equals 0. Now, it would be kind of helpful if I broke these, if I factored these a little bit further, because you can factor x squared minus 2, right? That's a difference of two squares. Um, so I might, it might be easier to look at the factors like this. If I factor this, I can factor that to x minus 2 times x plus 2. This can be factored into x minus 1 times x plus 1. That's another way to factor this further. If you guys notice these are different in two squares, you don't have to. But I think it's easier when you look at this because now you guys can look at every zero. Now we need to look at every single factor and determine the multiplicity. So, here, this one has a multiplicity of 2, right? Yes? So you can just say an even multiplicity. Here, multiplicity of equal to 2. Here, 1, boom, boom, boom. And I'll say m equals. Here, the multiplicity equals 1. So, what does it say about multiplicity when it's even? It, even it, touches. it touches. Here, the multiplicity is just going to cross in each one of these. All right. And so what's so important, though, here's what I want to get, because this gets confusing. The reason why we like to determine multiplicity on the linear factors, yeah, these are quadratic. But ladies and gentlemen, what is still the k on the outside of that factor? It's still 1, right? Mm -hmm. So don't be worried about what is inside the factor, because you need to actually factor these down to the linear factors where every single term inside of there is, is linear. But anyways, it all depends on, still, even if I left this as x squared, this factor is 1. However, there's two zeros within that, as you saw. All right? And what's nice about that is, I'll show you guys how you can graph that real quick. Just by knowing that, you guys should know what the graph looks like. Because if I have a graph, first of all, it's even, and the LC is positive. So the end behavior looks like that. Then I have a 0 at 0, negative 2, positive 2, negative 1, and positive 1. Right? But this is the only one that has a multiplicity of 2. Right? So that means it's going to rebound. It's either going to go up and up or down and down. So if I follow this end behavior, I know it has to cross here. It has to cross here. But then it has to rebound. So if I'm already up here, it has to look like that. But then it has to cross this one, it has to cross that one. Now that's a horrible representation of a graph, but you guys can see that's what that graph will look like. If you guys take your graphing calculator, you'll see that's exactly what the graph goes for. All right, you don't have to graph, but I just want you guys to see, you see how this multiplicity, how that works when you have a multiplicity. So just look at the factor to determine the multiplicity, okay? And please do not change your answer on your...